Hi there, I'm Donna Wolf from Nastasia.com. Today I'll show you how to crochet this flower kitchen pad. It has a nice layered look and it's made by connecting five modified granny squares together. To do this I'm using three colors of worsted weight cotton yarn and a G hook. We'll start off by making a square with a slip knot and then we'll chain six. Slip stitch to the first chain to form a ring. As you are making these squares, if you find this chain is too tight or too loose, feel free to modify the size. We'll first make a chain three. This will serve as one double crochet. In the ring, we'll make three more double crochet stitches. Technically, once completed, we will have made four double crochet stitches in this ring thus far. Now we'll work on the corner. For each corner, I'm making a chain five. As before, if later on you find the chain five doesn't work, feel free to adjust it up or down and count. And then we're going to make four double crochet stitches all in the ring. This is matching the three double crochet plus chain three that we just did before in the ring. And now we'll move on to the next corner with a chain five. Then we do our four double crochet stitches in the ring followed again by another corner making a chain five again, followed again by our four double crochet stitches all in the ring. We need to make our last corner, which is a chain five again. And when we are finished with that, we'll slip stitch to the top of the original chain three starting this round. You can see what the first round of my square looks like thus far. It's basically four sets of four double crochet stitches with a chain five in between them for the corners. Moving on to round two, I'm using a blue yarn and placing a slip knot on my hook. We'll start off with a chain three so that it serves as our first double crochet. And then in this chain five corner, we'll make 13 double crochet stitches. As mentioned, our first chain three counted as a double crochet, so once completed, technically we will have made 14 double crochet stitches all in this corner. And you might need to slide some stitches down as you work to fit them all in the space. Once completed with the first corner, we'll move on to the next chain five space. And in it, we will make 14 double crochet stitches all in that ring. Plus, you'll make your last corner with 14 double crochet stitches in it as well. Slip stitch to the top of the chain three and fasten off your square. To connect these five squares, we're going to do single crochet stitches along the top edge and connect the squares to each other with a single crochet along their side edges. I'm using a yellow yarn, placing a slip knot on my hook, and making a single crochet stitch in between the blue petals. Then I make a single crochet in each of the next 14 double crochet petals. That first stitch is a bit tough to see and you might need to move the initial single crochet out of the way to more easily access the top of the stitch. Continue around the 14 stitches. Then when that petal is done, make a single crochet again, then proceed with making one single crochet in each of the next 14 stitches and finally make a single crochet in the space between the second and third petal. You can see what this looks like thus far. Now it's time to connect the second square to the first square. We'll do this by ensuring the squares are facing the same way and then make a single crochet in between any one of the petals from the second square. And you might need to pull this stitch a bit tighter so that it doesn't sag or have any loose space between them. Then proceed with working on this second square in a similar manner to how we did our first square. And as before, place another single crochet in between the second and third petal. You'll continue connecting all five squares to each other this way, going around two petals on top of each square and connecting the squares in between along their side edges. Our next step has us crocheting the squares along their bottom border edge this time. We'll primarily just crochet in the 14 double crochet stitches as well as add a single crochet in between the bottom two petals. We won't worry about connecting them together along the sides since they are already connected via the single crochet in the space along each of the sides from the top layer. The most important thing to note with going along this bottom layer is we are having the back of the squares face us as we place our border around the top edge. This is different than the outside top edge where the front of the squares and the front of the stitches faced us while putting on the border edging. This is important because when we go to finalize the flower, we'll look for the edging to match the front of the work and we'll know that's the top of the work. 
The bottom of each square will have an edging that faces the correct way, but the stitches of the squares will have the back of the work facing us instead. Our next step is to open up the bottom section of each of the squares. I like to double the yarn on a yarn needle. We're going to do a little sewing to get the center of the flower pad to look nice and add that layered look to it. We're going to look for each of the single crochet stitches between the two bottom petals and then take our yarn and sewing needle and make a stitch into it. Then we'll move on to the next square, looking for the single crochet stitch between the bottom two petals and take our yarn needle and make a stitch into it. Using the two strands of yarn, pull the center section of the flower closed, then tie and knot it securely. You can fish the strands along the back with a crochet hook and then weave them in securely. Assuming all went well, you should be able to pull open the bottom section of each of the squares and flare them out to form the top layer of petals. If you are using cotton yarn, you can use a warm iron with a pressing cloth or some steam to flatten these flowers out if you want them to stay down a little more. That's how I crochet a nice and colorful layered flower kitchen pad.